Hello everyone, I have made some changes to my high voltage impulse generator to make it even more efficient and these are the schematics for the setup and I will explain it to you how it's built and what parts are used and as you can already see it is a quite simple setup with not many parts involved. So if you haven't watched any of my other videos, I will explain it now in detail how this works. So let's start. We have our function generator here. This is a two volt signal coming, a square wave signal coming from my function generator that's built in my oscilloscope. And this signal gets amplified by, yeah, a cheap audio amplifier. It's enough that is powered with nine volts. And the output signal um, gets into my MOSFET. This is an IRFP460A N channel MOSFET. And yeah, we have a 150 ohm resistor. You can use different values. It, it is not that important between 50 and 200 ohms, it's all fine. I didn't notice any big difference between the values. So basically this is connected to the gate of my MOSFET and from the drain of my MOSFET, there is a connection going to my middle coil. So I will explain this shortly. I have a stack of three coils these are bifiler coils. They are nearly identical. And I have stacked them three on top of each other. And the middle one is facing the opposite direction of the other two, as you can see. And in this setup, the middle coil is the coil that gets pulsed by this whole setup. So the outer coils are just where I connect my load. So let's continue. We have here um, our source of the MOSFET. This is my ground, where basically I connect the minus of my power supply. And on the inner rim from the middle Biofiler coil, I connect my positive from my power supply. You will see this shortly. This is just the schematics. And the outer coils, they are connected in series. So at the bifiler coil, we all, always have, I'll show you at the coil itself, we have an inner rim and we have an outer rim where it comes from. As you can see here, this comes from the outer side, this comes from the inner rim. And it's connected like this, that um, the inner rim of our uh, top coil is our positive high voltage output and the outer rim is connected to the inner rim of the bottom coil. And the outer rim of the bottom coil, as you can see here, is also connected to ground or to the minus of our power supply. So this is the only connection of these two output coils to our system. Yeah. So basically we have high voltage and ground in between this. So these are the schematics. Now let's show you how it's actually built. As you already saw, these are my three bifiler coils. And here we have the MOSFET, it's attached to a heatsink. And yeah, I have connected everything with these cables so I can change the configuration quickly. You can do it better and solder, solder them together directly. But yeah, it doesn't matter for this setup right now. What we have here is our gate, our drain and our source. The gate, as you saw, 
in the diagram is our 150 ohm resistor coming uh, going to the green cable and the green cable is attached to our audio amplifier plus and audio mean and, and the, si the input signal mi minus is connected via the yellow cable <laughs> to our ground yeah here we have the positive from our power supply that is here connected directly to the inner rim of the middle coil and the negative of our power supply connected to our ground point the black cable goes directly to the outer rim of the lowest coil and is also connected to ground of course this would be this connection right here yeah i hope i have explained all maybe this one here we have the connection of the upper and the lower coil as they are connected in series Here we have a whole view. Yeah, it's kind of messy, but that is like it is when you're experimenting. But it's a pretty easy setup. So let's power it up. So as you can see here, I have a blue cable and here I have a red cable. And my red cable is attached to the high voltage output and the blue cable to our ground point. And I have connected these two to a fluorescent tube. This is a 23 watt fluorescent tube. And I will light this up. So let me just turn off the lights so you can see better. So the lights are turned off. And I will show you another thing. Here is my oscilloscope. This is also working as my function generator at the same time. And here I have my high voltage probe, not connected. And I can't connect it to my high voltage because the voltage gets too high. This is a 1200 probe, so I could measure four kilovolts, but it will get higher than that. So I just leave it here and it will pick up the signal anyways and show it here. So the function generator, I'll show you. We are running at around 38.4 kilohertz. That's just the resonant frequency of my coils or the setup itself. And as you can see, we have a square wave signal and that gets amplified by this small audio amplifier. So here is my power supply. It's currently turned off, so let's turn it on. Now I will increase the voltage a bit. And I do this step by step and show you what happens. So we had around nine volts. We can already see the high voltage probe not connected to the system, just laying here already picks up a signal and now let's increase the voltage 10 volts you see it's not light up and if i increase it even more 15 now we get something it will start to light up here and then it will go to here and then it's fully lit up so i will increase the voltage even more you can see it lights up and now it's almost fully lit up and this is our signal picked up by the probe that is not connected so um, yeah you will see how the signal look like and the frequency but the voltage readings are of course not the real voltage because it's not connected and yeah if I put it if I take it 
you will see it will change depending on where it lays. Ah, here it's high, <laughs> let's put it there. So where it's laying right now, it's around 1.5 kilovolts. Of course, it's not really 1.5 kilovolts. So this is our input voltage. We are at around 29 volts and 0.2 amps. Yeah, you can calculate yourself. We're around six watts of power usage and this 23 watt bulb is lighting up quite bright. It's not fully lit up, but it's almost lit up. And I have done some tests on how I could increase my output because my power supply is limited. I'm running at the maximum. So I have here a copper sheet, simple 0.5 millimeter sheet of copper. And if I place it on there, maybe you will see on the camera. Yeah, it doesn't seem that much brighter on camera, but in reality it's getting a lot brighter. If I put this on there, and you can also see the voltage goes up if I put it on there. And of course my power draw also goes up. So we are using around 10 watts now. And now with the copper sheet on there, it's almost fully lit up. I don't know how bright it really is when it's fully lit up, but it's kind of bright and what you would expect from this kind of light. And this works with any metal. I think copper is the best. If you put it on there, it's just a dielectric reflector and this will increase my output. I don't know how this works or why it is like that. So I just take it as it is. Yeah, that was the principle of the whole system. And yeah, we now with the copper sheet removed, we are using, I'd say six, seven watts to power this one up. So quite efficient, I would say if it is any kind of like over unity, I honestly, I don't know. I don't want to speculate on that because I have no means of measuring this. To be honest, it's, it seems to me that it's using really little power for this amount of brightness. And, and where I live, we have ratings for lamps and these range from a to G and G would be the least efficient. This is this one. This is rated G for lowest efficiency, but I'd say with yeah around six to 10 Watts that we had in this system right now, this is pretty efficient lighting. Mm. Yeah. Let me know what you think about this system. And if you have any ideas of improvements, See you later. Bye.